Colossae chapter 1, Paul's letter to the church of Colossae, or we can say to the Colossians, hallelujah. And uh, so we're going to pick up in verse 9, you can go back and read the first eight verses, they're a, good, they're a good predecessor to this, but we've read it several times, we won't go ahead and pick up tonight in verse 8, it says, um, who declared unto us your love in the Spirit, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. So remember, we Paul, we said here, Paul had a prayer and a desire for the people. And these, what, this is what he prayed in his prayer. They might be filled with the epinosis, or the full, complete, accurate, and experiential knowledge of God, of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We said this back at the beginning, that even having the clear, price, accurate, experiential knowledge of God has to be tempered or have the parameters of uh, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. Then he goes on and says this, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, with all, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And so, um, we, we were kind of going along there. We kind of, I, I was trying to get to increase in the knowledge of God uh, on Wednesday night. I'm not really sure if I, how, how I really accomplished that task or not. Uh, we, we get, well, actually, I know I didn't because I got drawn over to some, to some other things. And um, the Lord had, was having me specifically minister along a certain line as we kind of got into that. And so, uh, we'll just have to kind of back up here. Amen. He was dealing with some people about some stuff, and, you know, thank God that uh, if people will listen to the Word, it'll, it'll avert uh, difficult paths. Amen? Amen. You know, um, you know, someone was telling me of, of a particular minister, and they called a bunch of ministers and talked about some doctrine they teach, it, and, and, and they all call him their spiritual father, and then he sat down at the table and said, now the Lord told me to share this with you. You know what I'd be doing? Yes, sir, I'm ready to listen. Yeah. You know what they did? They got mad and walked out of the meeting. After he started telling them what they were preaching was off. Yeah. And they didn't like you saying, listen, I think you guys, you know, the Lord told me to call you in and tell you this. We need to, we need to be more aware that um, the Spirit of God uses men to speak to us. And they're not cooking pastors or cooking preachers as long as they're telling you what you want to hear. They're cooking just as good when they're telling you things you don't like to hear. Amen. Because, you know, and, and, and the same word that will build your doctrine and the same word that will instruct you in righteousness is also the same word that will correct and reprove. Amen. Ever just kind of be the bottle dolls. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about increasing the knowledge of God. Isaiah 53, 11 says, um, He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be, shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall, many right, my, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear... Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn my phone on non-bus. Hallelujah. Um, shall he bear their iniquities? And so we want to increase on the knowledge. Go to Daniel 12. We're just going to read a few scriptures here. We'll jump in here somewhere, wherever it seems right just to jump. It's like Tim said this morning, you can start reading all the scriptures on trust the Lord. That was, I tell you, if you weren't here this morning, that was as good a sermon as you'll ever get. I'm telling you, that was good stuff. And then, and then he said something. He said, I believe this is a word for this church. Not for the church, this church. So you need to, uh, is it out there yet, Brother Bill? Not quite. Not quite. Should be out there tomorrow. All right. It'll be out there tomorrow. So you need to listen to it. Amen? All right. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, Daniel 12, 4, shut up the words and seal the books, even to the time of the end. Shall, uh, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Habakkuk 2, 14. Habakkuk. That's one of those stuck together chapters. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, those are the pages in your Bible you can look at and go, man, those are really, this, 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 this paper is really uh, long and lasting. I've had this Bible for years, and it's not messed up yet. 
Amen? I'm having to get mine in stack because I use my uh, PC study Bible so much. Come on. Who's a Beckett for, guys? I'm, I'm lost in here trying to get him unstuck. Come on. You know, you can turn three pages and miss four books. Back at the beginning of your Bible is a um, concordance. Hallelujah. And on page such and such in my study Bible. Well, Habakkuk 2.14. There you go. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There we go. Thank you. That just helps. Amen. The, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the, the, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. How, how many want to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Now, I got to go back to what I used. I used to always cut and paste all the entire scripture into my notes, but there's so many with this particular uh, thing that I didn't want to do that because it would cost me about 50 pages to uh, do it. John 17, how many want to have the, uh, be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord? Amen. amen. I, I love experiencing His glory. Can you say amen? John 17, 3. This is life eternal that you may, they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So we need to, listen, God, you know, one thing God wants us to do is come into a knowledge of a knowledge of him. Can you say amen? You know, it's, it's not enough. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I know over the, over the history of the church, there has been um, a, we, we've institutionalized so many things. Uh, you have your liturgical churches. Uh, the liturgy is everything. You know, how, many know, how many don't know what liturgy is? And that's where they read, they, and, they, and people read, the, pe the priest reads, and they, they go through all these, these different things, and it's called the liturgy. You know, you'll see it, and, and when they refer to it as liturgical churches, and, and that would be the Catholic Church, the Episcopal Church, the Presbyterian Church. Those churches are, are, are liturgical, and there's a lot of, you know, and, and you, have set, you have to read this particular thing in the Bible on there this week, and, and only the priest can read from the epistles, and, and you know, or, and, 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 and lay people can't read from certain places in the Bible publicly. And, and all this kind of stuff. And then they have a book of liturgy where, the, you know, they, he reads something, they read back. And, uh, you know, how many know you don't retain a whole lot of that? You, if you do that in school, if you, had to, if you were reading your part in a book and you were going through the book at school for a play, you, and, you, and you, you, you just, all you're doing is follow along where I'm supposed to say something, you repeat. If you went back out of class and said, what did you say? I don't remember. Amen. It's not, it's not about um, just simply exposing us to th different things in the Bible. It is about coming to know him. Amen. Jesus prayed that we would know, you know, come, uh, the, know the only true God. Amen. And Jesus Christ whom thou sent. So come to that knowledge. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Man, I just says First Corinthians and grabbed too many pages and went four books. Second Corinthians two fourteen says, "Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph, Hallelujah, in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place." Glory to God. Look over four six. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Why? Because he doesn't want them to what? Know him. Can you say amen? That's verse 4. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to what? Give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Satan's working to keep us from seeing it. God's at work causing us to see it. Can you say amen? God wants us to, it doesn't, we, we, we have adopted in the church in so many uh, theological positions, and I understand what Tim was talking about this morning, he's talking about trust, even in the face of, uh, you know, you, there's things we can have faith for, um, and there's things you can't have faith for. We talked about that before. You can't have faith that you're going, Jesus is going to come back on a certain date. Wow. Well, first of all, faith is based on what the Word of God tells you. 
And what the Word of God tells us is no man knows the day or the hour. And then we can know the season, but you don't know the day or the hour. There's a difference between that. There's a difference between knowing and understanding the season or the time to, you know, uh, you know, not, not um, the, the clock time, but the season something is versus a specified date of an event. Okay? Now, the Bible doesn't teach you that you can, you can know the day or the time, you, or, or the day or the hour, but you can know the season. Because about, Jesus talked about when you see the fig tree budding, you know, this generation and so forth. So, we, we have signs, and buddy, do you see the signs? I mean, uh, I would have never thought in my lifetime we would have been in a position that we might not back Israel. I never thought that would happen. I thought we, even in, in, in studying years ago, uh, you would think, you know, we had, you know, well, even when all the, the Armageddon starts, starts, there's nothing about the Bible really about America. We we're going to stand with Israel and that kind of stuff. And I can tell you that's not true anymore. That's just not true anymore. We do not have political people who want to stand with Israel. They don't. Go, go look. Go look what they said. Uh, the current president said if things turn ugly, he, in his book, Audacity of the Ope, he said that he would stand with the Muslims. Now, how can you vote? I, mean, I, I don't want to get back to the politics. But how can you support uh, that as a Christian, somebody who's going to stand with the Muslims? We're staying with Israel. <laughs> Amen. We're supposed to stand with Israel. And um, uh, the things are going on. How many, how many remember uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, uh, chemical weapons stockpile that he, di he supposedly didn't have? Right. Guess what Syria's got? And there were people who said that, it, that there were trucks and stuff moved during, the, during our invasion into Syria. Now they're getting ready to unload it on their own people. Syrian gas. There's stuff going on in the Middle East right now, and there, there, there are things happening and things. Um, you, you don't think Iran wants a nuclear weapon just, just so they can, uh, you know, join the big boys, do you? Now, that, that lunatic they got running that country says his goal is the complete annihilation of the state of Israel. The day after the U.N. voted to recognize, I don't, I don't know why I'm over here, but that's all right. The day after the U.N., this past week, the U.N. voted to recognize Palestine as a state. And the next day they got up, the Palestinians got up and declared what? Because all we want to be is recognized. No, they got up the next day. Now they got recognized. It's like every other thing. All we want is equality. And the minute they, they get equality, they're in your face with something else. You know, they get up and declare that Jerusalem is the eternal state uh, uh, capital of Palestine next day. There's a lot going on. There's a, there's a lot about the signs of the time. Amen. And, um, but, you know, a lot of people have adopted this, you know, this kind of crazy, uh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And, you know, and um, God's sovereign and there's things going on and we can't change. Now, I was talking about faith and trust before I got, got, kind of got over there. So you can't bring Jesus back. He's going to come back when he comes back. And I got news for you of the Dome of the Rock, although on the inside of the Dome of the Rock at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, all on the inside, written in Arabic, it says, there is no Son of God, 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 and just keeps repeating all the way up the Dome. Now, <laughs> these people actually went and bricked up the Eastern Gate. Now, come on. If, if, you know, you'd like to keep him out. Now, do you think if Jesus comes back that the brick's going to keep him out? You think, what, what, what kind of reasoning is this? They went and bricked up the eastern gate. It's an actual gate in the, in the wall called the eastern gate near the temple mount. And they blocked it up because Jesus was supposed to come out through the eastern gate. And they bricked it up and closed it so that Jesus couldn't come through there when he comes back. From the dead. I got news for you. you know, I mean, even if you don't believe he's God and he went to heaven, if you believe he's going to come back from the dead, you think a brick wall is going to stop him. <laughs> and, I, and I love, I love the, uh, the, 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 um, the, it's not the parity, but the, the catch 22 or the, um, uh, whatever of this whole thing is they've proven that the dome of the rock which they built where they believe was the temple mount in order to keep Jerusalem from rebuilding the temple 
is 300 yards off site. They found the, they have found the foundations to the walls of the temple, and it's not under the rock. And so, um, the the, Mormon, the Mormons, the Muslims have have declared that if Israel tries to rebuild the temple, they'll declare war and start a war because of that, because they don't want the temple rebuilt. They built the dome of the rock to keep Israel from rebuilding the temple. It's going to happen. I said it's going to happen now. <clears throat> we can't. We can't use. That's all this side the information. We can't use our faith to get Jesus back. Amen. But you know we can live. But we can trust in the Lord during that time. That's what Tim was talking about this morning. The difference between you know the things you can believe God for and the thing and trusting God during times of things you can't change. There's some things you can't change. You can't. You, you, there's just certain things you can't. You can't use your faith and change because they're not going to be changed. You know the Lord's going to come back. I mean, you can't, you can't hold him off. He's coming back when he's supposed to come back. The Father has that, that time in his heart, in his mind, and he's going to really be saying, Jesus, go get him. All right. Okay? So, we, we live by faith on the things we can. We trust God on the things that we can't change. And, um, but in that, what Satan's trying to do is blind people's minds so they don't get knowledge of him trying to stop us from receiving the knowledge of God and God wants us to be, have a full knowledge of him. He wants us to come to know him and to trust him and uh, to, uh, to understand that he's there with us in difficult times and the Lord is there with you in difficult times. Say thank God for it. Amen. He sh shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And so God wants us to come to know that, and Satan's resisting that. He's out to stop us from walking in that light. He's out to stop us from seeing that light, and we just have to keep pressing in and, and walking because Paul prayed that we would be increased in that knowledge. God is not interested in being a sovereign God who, who orchestrates your life as a puppet. And, and that's kind of where I was heading for. <clears throat> um, God, we got so much of the church that, that are sovereignist. You know, every, the God's got everything. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole. We say, oh, he's got the little bitty baby. Yeah, and, and, and what one guy said one time, if he does, he's got it sure messed up. Satan's the god of this world. Adam sold out high trees, gave it over to the devil. The Bible tells us in, um, in, um, right here in this verse, in verse 4 it says, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Well, Satan's the God of this world. God's not blinding their eyes, lest the light of the gospel preach, reach unto them. He said, go preach the gospel so they would believe. Satan is the God of this world. I said, Satan is the God of this world. And he's trying to keep us from walking in that knowledge. See, God, so God does not want us as robots where we just simply, and we, we used to, I, I was trying to make a um, comparison to some of the things Tim said. In old days when we said trust God, we began to just put up with whatever was going on. That's not, that's not biblical trust. I trust God because I know his character. I trust God because I know what he will and he won't do. Now, I may not be able to change certain things. I may not be, like you said, this one, we can't change the economic system. Just believe me, you know, that, the, you know, that we're going to change the entire economic system of the world. Um, so we have, we have to deal with the economic system. I mean, we, we can believe God that God will cause us to flourish and to prosper even in the midst of a bad economic system. But we just can't go out there and change the economic system. Well, we know there are people who want it. In socialist nations, there are people who want... Uh, and listen, let's face it. How many remember Hitler? You know how he got the power? He didn't come to power by overthrowing the government. They put him in. The people put him in. The people voted him in. He, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was put in by the people at their will. That was a stupid mistake and cost a bunch of, a bunch of them their lives. And then, a bunch of, uh, and, then, and then millions of Jews were killed. But uh, they were, he was put in by the request of the people. Be careful what you wish for. Amen. But we can still believe God for our, us to be taken care of and us to flourish. 
in, in, the land, in, in time of famine. But we, we've adopted so many times this sovereign mind, mindset where we don't, we don't think uh, we, the, the, you know, that anything's going on, God's got it going on for certain reason. He's got some, some ulterior motive. He's got some special reason for doing that. Then we don't use our faith. And, we, and we're really not walking in the knowledge of God. See, when you know him, you'll know things about his character. And this is where, this is where I'm heading. I, 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 I went around the block three times to get here. It was a big block. Amen. Um, if you have the knowledge of, the, of his glory, amen. If you have the, 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 the glory of the knowledge of his glory, the glo knowledge of, his, of him, and you know him, and you're increasing in that knowledge, then when things come that you know are counter um, to him, opposite of him, all right, let's get fancy, antithetical to him, amen, they're, they're, they're contrary to his character and nature. I know, Brother Bill, I just, we're going to move this front row up some more so I can get on the front row. I, I mean, I, I like to do this. And now I can, they don't like for me to do this anymore because I go dark on the screen. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> I'm just being able to do this. Hallelujah. You know, contrary to the knowledge of God, th th you know that's not God. Because you've increased in the knowledge of him, you've come to know him, you've come to understand him. When something's going on and you know it's not, you know that's not his character, his nature, then you just don't buy into it that God's got some reason for doing it. You go, something's wrong here because that's not who my father is. Something's not right here because that's not how he does things. Something's not, you know, this just isn't quite right. Amen. Amen. You know, so that's why one thing God wants us to increase in the knowledge of him so that we know the battles we're fighting. You got to know who the enemy is in order to fight him. I mean, if you don't know where, the, I was, we, me and Nathan um, um, sat down the other night, uh, last weekend, I think, and uh, we had found and, and ordered and bought, uh, actually, I was at Walmart, and they had, they had DVDs on sale, you know, that they, nobody apparently bought, but they had The Battle of the Bulge. And I don't have, I didn't have that in my library, and I like that movie. And it's just a good, it's just a good, you know, with Henry Fonda in it, and um, um, that, that guy, oh, I forgot his name, he was in, he was a television series, and, um, you know, Bretta, the guy that played Bretta, and, um, and a bunch of people, and Tramp from Lady the Tramp, that guy, that guy, whoever, you know, Telly Savalas, it's a really accurate, for fictionalized, it's not really fictionalized, it was condensed in order to make the events um, quicker for the screen, but it, these, basically it was the essence of what took place at the Battle of the Bulge. <coughs> and, um, and I was going to say something special about that, because there was really a good point there. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get off of points and forget the other point. So, huh? That's right. That's right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly where I was going. Well, during the Battle of the Bulls, one of the things that the Germans did is they found a bunch of, they sent out flyers all over Germany warning people who spoke English and who had lived in America before the war. Because they were going to drop them behind enemy lines in American uniforms and use deception about something. What they were going to do is they were going to, they were going to um, um, send the Allies up one road which by changing signs, by, by saying they were blowing the bridges and all this kind of stuff. And they spoke American. They had American colloquials and all that kind of stuff. And the guys didn't know that the enemy was right there in front of them deceiving them. Had they known it, they would have killed them immediately. Okay? But they, because, because they didn't know who the enemy was, you know, they got in deception, got all mixed up, got the wrong town, thought they were in one place, they were in another. And then because the Germans had a, they would need to be where the Allies were heading, they had to deceive them and send them somewhere else. It was, it was all part of what, it was, it was imperative to their plan. And um, so it wasn't until they were exposed that they were able to defeat them and, and understand what was going on. And the same thing happens in the church. We'd see when you don't know who the enemy is, and what's going on, you don't know how to fight it. 
how do you use your faith to believe God for healing if you believe God put it on you in the first place? Now, let's be honest. How do you believe God? To, now, what usually happens is this. You don't use your faith. You use the hope so's when you believe that way. What do you mean? You'll go to God and say, Lord, if it be thy will, heal me. And if not, then for whatever greater purpose you have, let me have at least the wisdom or the understanding to put up with this and go through this. So, so now you're not really battling. You're, you're simply capitulating to, I don't understand why you did this, but if, if, you, if you have some kind of mercy or you got any kindness in you at all, please help me out here. And usually it doesn't, and you go around and everybody goes, hey, well, the Lord's working out something. The Lord's teaching you something. He's got some great reason for doing this. He has some ulterior purpose for doing this. And he, <clears throat> but see, when you know him, sorry, for, sorry, you know him, and you know that he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. When you've increased in the knowledge of these things, when things come, you don't go, Lord, if it's your will, take this off of me. You know, Lord, I know you didn't send this to me. You're my healer. And now you can fight the enemy in faith because you know who to fight. You're not asking God to take off what he put on. Now, I'll tell you how, how bad some people get. They go around and they tell people that anybody that says they can lay hands on the sick and get them healed is of the devil. And then turn right around and preach God made him sick in the first place. <laughs> and, and I just look, where, where, what Bible scripture did you get that from? You know, but they actually teach these kind of things. You know, people laying hands on the sick to get them healed are of the devil. Well, please show me in the Bible anywhere you had people running around laying hands on the sick to get them healed, and they were of the devil. You even had a bunch of exorcists, uh, people cast out devils one time. They came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, he, they cast out G devils by your name. He said, they that are, that are not against us are for us. Now, then you had the seven sons of Sceva, and they were, they were just doing stuff. But could you remember what they said? We cast out, we, can't, we command you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. They didn't even, they, didn't even, they were just saying, look, this is, this is supposed to work. <laughs> we don't, you know, and the devil said what? Jesus said no, and Paul said no, but I don't know you. Amen? Different, different, different thing there. But the other guys, they were saying, they're cast out devils by, by your name. He said, if you're not against us, you're for us. Amen? Now, if you know who the enemy is, well, that's why one reason we're increasing in the knowledge of God. See, when you come into the kingdom of God, all you do is you love the Lord. I'm born again. I'm saved. And you just kind of like this, I love the Lord, I'm not going to hell. Woo! You know, you can have a party over that. Not going to hell, I love Jesus. Woo! Glory! And that's kind of the extent of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You don't know anything else. You don't know you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And the Lord begins to deal with you, and you get convicted. And you say, well, I'm not supposed to do that. The Lord's dealt with me about that. You know, and, you, and then you hear the Bible. You go, oh, yeah, that's that. Well, the Bible says not, and you stop, and, and, and you begin to grow. But then you got a lot of people out there saying all kinds of stuff. And so you're so hungry for God, you turn on Christian television. I wouldn't recommend that. There's just so much stuff out there, you just don't even... You know, if you got one person, you, you know, if you got a, a particular minister that, that ministers to you and, and you go listen to them, okay. But just to sit around listening to one and one right after the other, especially the little talk shows, you got to watch that. Even the local talk shows, you know, and sometimes they're the worst. I quit going for that reason. It got so bad. Yeah. I just, I just I said, forget it. I'm not going to be a part of it. And then this is crazy stuff, you know. Some guys on there telling everybody you're not supposed to have, but we're not supposed to have only one pastor. All the ministers in the church are the heads of the church, and then there's one guy out of them who's who's the uh, set one. Crazy that plurality of eldership doctrine, crazy stuff. Now you just need to, you need to grow in grow in the knowledge of God. Get a, get get places that feed the whole counsel of the word. Don't tell you how much been done away with. Amen. I'll tell you like the little girl said. You know, told the pastor she's um. She thought she was going to lose the back of her Bible that day because every time he told her it wasn't something for, for the day, she tore it out. Got down to the covers. Hello? 
Amen. That's not for today now. It's, it's because it's not the Holy Bible. It's just a collection of writings. It's how the, the secularists look at things. So, but here he says here, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now listen to this, what he says here. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. <coughs> We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not cast, but not destroyed. Now look at this. Look what he says here. We have the treasure in earth and vessels. Then he starts listing. Oh yeah, we're troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I think one translation says knocked down, but not knocked out. Hallelujah. Amen. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Hallelujah. So, we have here, Paul, you know, going on after talking about being, you know, um, God shining that knowledge into us through the face of Jesus. Tell us we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And then he begins to talk about what that knowledge does. It brings us to an understanding that we can be in trouble, but not distressed, perplexed, not despaired, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not uh, destroyed. Amen. See, as we come, that's why Paul prayed that they come in increasing knowledge. See, when you come to know God in, in the new birth, you know him as a baby. You're limited in your knowledge of God. It's, I mean, it's honest. The more you walk with him, the more you increase in the knowledge of him. Amen. And that's God's desire as you increase in the knowledge of him. Why? Because as you come to that place, as we say it again, you understand what's from God, what's not from God, what God's involved in, what God's not involved in. What God's behind, what God's not behind. I mean, I guarantee you, some of you could, look, could go back and think about your parents. It's like, well, yeah, I know your mom and dad did such and such. And you go, ain't no way. I know my parents. I, I know how they are. I know how they think. I know how they act. That's not, they could, they're incapable of doing what you just said. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Or, you know, maybe come up and say something. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something just really drastic. Hello? You know, but maybe they came and told Dick, well, Ellie did such and such. And Dick, Dick would say, there's no way. Yeah, I know she did. Well, I, I don't believe it. Why? Because I know her. There's no way she would have done that. I've seen her in the worst. I've seen her at her best. I've seen her in between. I know her character. I know her nature. I know, I know her, how she thinks, how she acts, how she responds. There's no way in the world my wife did that. that how'd that come? Through increasing in knowledge. Hello. In marriage, you can use marriage in a lot of ways, you know. Uh, when, you get, when you get married, you consummate the marriage, and you come to know the person. According to the Bible, that's the biblical terms. Like somebody say, know them biblically. But you know what? That's not all there is to know. You come to know more things about them over time. Amen. So we, we're born again. We know God. But Paul said he wants us to increase in the knowledge of God. There's more to know than that we've been born of the Spirit and that he's our spiritual father. Amen. That he loves us. There is more to know about him. There's more to know about his character. And so it's important, uh, as Paul says here, to increase in that knowledge. Spending time with him. Coming to know him. Spending, that, spending the intimacy with him. Knowing his character. Um, and, when, and I'll tell you, I, there, there's been times that I've almost gotten mad when people said God did such and such, and I know that's totally opposite of his character. Hello. Well, that baby has, you know, baby's got no legs, no arms, you know, and they're going to go out now and, and, and everybody's going to tell, tell everybody that God had a reason for doing that. That'll make, that'll make me mad. 
Why? Well, let me say this. If that baby had been born normal, and as soon as that baby was born, the doctors rolled it over next door into a room and operated on that baby and cut its arms and legs off, they would send that doctor to jail for malpractice and for, for I mean, uh, abuse. and, and, and you know, they, just have a, they would have a list of stuff because it was evil. But yet, they'll say God did it in the womb and had the baby born that way. He had a reason for it, and we just got to understand God has a reason. See, so I know that's not his character. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. That's not the character of my father. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Look over at 1 John 5. 1 John 5. I love how they do the Bible. Stuff. The first epistle general of John. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Notice he's given us an understanding that we may know him, that we may know him. When you came into the kingdom of God, God imparted you an understanding so that you could know him. But you've got to work on that. Can you say amen? All right. So we want to increase in the knowledge of God. Can you say amen? That helps us know the enemy. That helps us win the battles. That helps us overcome. Can you say amen?